Since most of you enjoyed my last car flip video where I flipped the 2007 Ford Focus, I decided to find another project to flip. I began searching the Copar Auto Auction where I find most of my deals. That is when I stumbled on a 1998 Chevrolet C5 Corvette. Not knowing how much these cars went for, my first impression was, well, this is a bit expensive and there's probably not much that I can do with it. Later that evening, I was taking a second glance of all the cars that were supposed to be going up for live auction the following day and the Corvette popped up again. So I decided to give it a second look and after doing some math, I came to a conclusion that my final bid would be $7,400. $400. And after going back and forth during the live bidding with a fellow Oregonian, I ended up winning the car for $7,400. It was located three hours away from me, so I had my friend Vadim go and pick it up for me. Eugene, Oregon, and Coopar here on my bed. I have a 98 Corvette. Owner doesn't like the little scratches and wrote it off as undercarriage, but. But other than that, pretty clean car for 22 years old. All right, let's try to give it a start. By the way, I've checked the oil levels and fluid levels. Cooling level at the top. If we see any coffee looking color, usually if you see a caramel macchiato under the oil cap, uh, might uh, need a head gasket replacement. Ooh, beautiful. 70,000 miles for a 22 year old car. Look at the interior of this thing. No torn leather, still got the manual from 22 years. Manuals look like comic books, man. Look at that. A few hours later, the car finally arrived. So I had to go take a look at it for myself. Alrighty, you guys, the car has finally come in and I'm telling you guys, this thing is a beauty. The question is though, is there anything wrong with it? And that's what we're gonna find out. I'm at the shop here right now with my mechanic. He's gonna take a look at it and let me know if there's anything wrong with it. But you guys, take a look at this. There was just a few little things right here in the tire. The paint overall looks very, very nice. I mean, obviously the little chips down below, but it sounds really good. No knocking or any of that. As you guys can see, the interior is in really, really good condition. It's got the original Corvette seats, no rips, nothing. That side also looks really good. Just a little bit of scratches right there it's got no lights on the dashboard exactly what we love to see so what i think is should be the right thing to do right now is to give this good old thing a little rev the game plan with this car is i'm gonna keep it here at the shop he's gonna put it on the lift he's gonna take a look at what's exactly wrong with it probably got scratched up a little bit underneath i don't know to what extent yet we're gonna put it on the lift and we're gonna find out about a few days later my mechanic came back to me with great news there was literally absolutely nothing wrong with the car besides a few dents and scratches underneath the subframe and the bumper there were absolutely no leaking fluids there was nothing punctured underneath and why i say that is because that was my point of concern because when i ran the carfax it showed that it was an undercarriage damage so that really left me with only two items which was replacing the tires and fixing the exhaust tip well, and also giving it a good clean, of course. So the time has finally come for me to open up my garage and finally take the Corvette out. I have not driven it or really touched it since I put it in my garage a few weeks ago. Um, I was waiting for the tires to come in, but the tires are finally here. Let's go ahead and open up this garage. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this car out. It was a big issue parking it in here because as you guys can see, barely fit right there. And then right here, barely fit too. So there's really no margin of error for me to back this car out. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna put these tires into the trunk. I'm gonna start it up and I'm gonna take it to a shop where my good friend is gonna be able to install them for me. So as I'm driving right now, I definitely do notice one thing is that it's pulling really hard to the right. And I mean, you can definitely expect that from a car that clearly looks like it's spun out on some kind of gravel road. Because if you see it right here, I'm driving and I let go, 
it just starts pulling to the right. I did start hearing some squeaking noise coming from one of the poke pulleys. Don't know exactly what it could be. Hopefully it's nothing major, which I don't think it will be. So after we get these tires replaced, I might take it to the shop one more time so he can uh, check out those pulleys and see why it's uh, why exactly it's squeaking. What do you what do you think about the, this one? This one looks pretty clean. You can do a balance. If you think that helps, I don't mind. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just agree with everything you say, man. <laughs> My good friend Max is a wizard when it comes to tires. And so he gave me some advice on which tires I should choose. The Corvette comes with two different sizes of tires for the front and the back. I really wasn't feeling like spending too much money on tires. And so I ended up buying two rear Atlas tires just because the two front tires were in pretty good shape. My friend Max recommended that we switch out the two rear tires, clean out the two front tires, as well as do a balance of all four tires. These tires are from 2007. Yeah, this guy's been risking it for a while. <laughs> it looks like these tires were actually from the previous owner before the last guy because yeah. when I looked, checked Carfax, the guy from 2007, when he owned it, it had 40,000 miles on it. And right now it has a little over 70,000. So these tires for sure have 30,000 on them. Wait, what does balancing do exactly? So when you go high speeds, it makes sure that all around it's balanced out correctly and it will show me if there's misbalance and I place weights in that spot. So the tire rolls evenly and perfectly. Oh, so it doesn't eat out the tire like disproportionately, correct? Uh, if the balance is really bad, yeah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. But this is really helps like when you feel like when you're driving like 80 miles an hour, you don't feel the road at all. Oh, gotcha. No bends, looks good. So this is 1.25 ounces of weight. 1.25 ounces in the green spot where it shows me on this side. This side looks good though. This guy right here, anywhere he goes, and I literally, literally mean anywhere, he can go on vacation and he's gonna be looking for good deals on tires in that area. This, this, how many times have you gone on a vacation and come back with a good deal on tires? 80% of the time. 80% of the time. You guys heard it from him. That's the goal. When I know I'm going someplace, I'm always looking out. Always looking for a good deal See? or something. See? When you're a businessman, you're always looking. You're always looking for that good deal. Yo, chill. These are new tires, man. Come on. <laughs> Can you tell me and everyone what makes them all season tires? Like, how, what about really, them looks all season? Um, in the end, it's all about how the tread is made. So usually on summer tires, the tread will be very aggressive. There's gonna be a lot of, not a lot of open space. Mm -hmm. And so it has more contact to the road, but these ones have a lot of place for rain to go, like water. So when you hit a water puddle, you don't hydroplane it. You're not just making this stuff up, right? No, I don't <laughs> just, think so. Just gotta act smart, man, just gotta act smart. So it looks like they were actually overinflated. So the tire, the middle kind of expanded more. That's why the middle is worn out completely and the sides aren't. Usually what you'll see most often is camber wear. So the tire doesn't always sit 100% evenly. It'll usually sit like this. Mm -hmm. And this side will wear out first. These were like severely overinflated. So the middle is just <sighs> Have you gone. ever seen him like this? Yeah, I've seen worse actually. Really? <laughs> this is all right, all right. <laughs> How much torque was that? <laughs> Five Ugga Duggas. Ooh, look at those tires. Alrighty, man. I really appreciate it. If you guys if you guys need to pump up your tires or get them balanced, <laughs> where, where do they go? <laughs> Come to me. Our shop is Tire and Alignment Services. We're on 67, around 67th and Columbia Boulevard. All right. And you can come to us. Sure, call ahead, schedule an appointment if you need anything. You guys basically do everything with cars, right? Yeah, we do, we do body repairs sometimes, you know, need something minor, we can help with that. Tires, alignment, balance, suspension work, we do all of that. Just give us a call, let us know. I can't tell you how well they did yet because I didn't get home safely. <laughs> but once I do, <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. I'll, I'll let you know if I get home safe. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta drive safe. Hey man, no drifting, right? No drifting. Not yet, not yet. After checking the tires off of my to-do list, there was really only one thing left, which was to give it a nice good old bath. But before I gave it a bath, I decided to stop by the gas station just to see how big the gas tank was on this car. And to no surprise, 
I ended up spending almost $100. I have a feeling I'm gonna be feeding her a lot. <laughs> Giving a car a wash is one of my favorite things to do when I'm flipping a car. It brings this great inner satisfaction seeing some piece of junk sometimes turn into a piece of art. C5 Corvettes, the oil pressure sensor is a very common issue and it's an issue that I ended up running into. So after purchasing the sensor, I had my mechanic replace it for me, which gladly solved the issue. Now with the car clean, the tires and the oil pressure sensor replaced, there was one thing left and that was the squeaking idler pulley. So last time when I took the Corvette to the shop, uh, the mechanic took off the idler pulley, he was able to clean it up a little bit and the squeaking went away. Um, but, it came back and it came back I think even a little bit louder and it doesn't go away even when you're driving before it would go away when you're driving. This job should have taken me 20 minutes maximum, but because I was inexperienced in purchasing the correct parts, I ended up having to take a few trips to AutoZone. The first time around, I ended up purchasing an idler pulley that did not come with a metal plate. So I ended up going to a different parts store, picking up a different idler pulley, and finally, it was the correct one. So in total, I spent about two hours driving back and forth between stores and replacing that pulley. Well, there you go. Got the idler fully replaced. No more squeaking, no more squealing, whistling, whatever it is. It sounds how it should sound. Through the process of flipping this Corvette, I was able to meet Jeff and Christian from JR Garage. They recently bought a car from Portland and they went to Instagram to see if anyone had space to store the car for them. And coincidentally, I had some space in my garage. So I ended up reaching out to them and we made it happen. After about a month or so, we were able to meet up in person and just have a pretty good chat. And while we were chatting, they mentioned that they actually had an exhaust from a C5 Corvette that they had previously. And they told me that they could get me a pretty good deal on it. And hearing that it was a pretty good deal, well, you know, I can't miss out on a good deal. So I ended up agreeing to purchase that exhaust from them. And let me tell you, that was the best decision that I made with this C5 Corvette. You'll see why. Well, I just came home and look what's at my doorstep. I do not know what's in here. I have an idea. Let's find out. It is finally here. We got that Billy Boat exhaust. Martin, say, stay tuned. This is going to be an interesting one. <laughs> it is finally that time to go ahead and take this Corvette to get these right here replaced. I mean, this exhaust, it sounds pretty good, I'd say. I actually have nothing wrong to say about these. It's just the exhaust tip is out. But like you guys know, I ended up getting a really, really good deal from JR Garage on that exhaust pipe that they ended up taking off of their C5 Corvette. So I am taking this exhaust to the shop right now to get it replaced. So the next time you guys will see this car, it will probably have a new exhaust on it. Let's do this quick trip transition to when I get this Corvette back and these are going to be gone and there's going to be a new exhaust on this car. Let's do this. One, two, three. Did it, did, did it work? Now with the new exhaust in, 
the car, I have to get a professional opinion from the professional critique. My wife. So we're gonna go ahead and start this car right now, and I'm gonna see what my wife thinks about this new exhaust, if it's too loud or not. So she, she, she's gonna let you guys know. Be honest, is it a little bit louder than what it used to be? Is it louder than your Prius? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the final and the most important part of this whole process was to sell the car. Now you may be wondering, how much did this Corvette end up costing me? Well, I do wanna say that in the breakdown of the repair of this car, I ended up excluding the exhaust. And the reason behind that is, if I were to be flipping it straight across just as is, I would have never replaced the exhaust. I would have kept it as is, I would have just fixed the tip of the exhaust. I purchased the Corvette for $7,400 and after all the fees, towing expenses, all the other miscellaneous expenses that I had, the total cost came out to $9,516.32. I did end up posting the car for a few days and why only a few days you may ask? Well, that's when I decided that I was gonna keep the car. You see, if this car did not have the low miles that it had, and it wasn't made in 1998, which coincidentally is the same year I was born, I probably would have sold it. To be fair though, I did ask around a few other sellers in my market that had basically the same C5 Corvettes with around the same kind of mileage, what their highest offers have been. And one of them told me that they have been offered 15 and a half thousand, and the other seller said they have been offered 13,000. To make math easier, I ended up going with the price point of 13,000. This is a very niche car, so I know it would have probably taken me some time to find a buyer, but I think 13 thousand is pretty viable. So if I could sell it for 13,000, which I think is possible, that would leave me with a profit of $3,483.68. Total amount of time that I spent on this car was about four hours. And obviously that doesn't include the time that I would have spent selling the car. And so I'll kick on a uh, two more hours on top, which brings me to a total of six hours. If we were to turn that into an hourly rate, that would be around $580. But again, that's if, if I were able to sell it for 13,000. No! Is it louder than my Prius? Just a little bit. Just a little bit? It's yeah. pretty close. Make him shiny, make him shiny, bro. Make him shiny. <laughs> <laughs> bro. Buckle your seatbelt. You, you. Two more car flip videos coming up so if you enjoyed this one feel free to subscribe and if you haven't seen my last car flip video you can check it out right here once again thank you guys so much for watching and until the next video the